What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and in today's video, we're kicking off a small series where we're gonna be breaking down all the scopes that are built into Resolve. I'm gonna be teaching you how to read and use them. And I do also wanna stress the importance of knowing the difference between using scopes and relying on scopes. Scopes are meant to be there as a guiding force. They're not meant to be our end all be all, but we can use them to avoid some frustration while grading and keep from playing that guessing game. Now I'm often asked which color space I'm working in in any given Resolve project. Most of the time that's gonna be DaVinci YRGB because that's my preference, but there are some projects where I prefer to use something like DaVinci Wide Gamut or ACES. And if you're looking to learn more about how to grade in ACES, then get excited because we're going to be hosting a live webinar on August 9th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. The registration is free, but we do have limited seating, so be sure to sign up right now. Plus, by signing up, you'll be automatically entered to win the Freelance Colorist Masterclass. We'll be picking three winners at the end of the training. The training is going to be broken up into three main steps. Number one, what is ACES and why you should care? Number two, how to set up ACES inside of your project. And number three, how to grade your footage inside of ACES. And I can guarantee you after watching this entire training, you're gonna be ready to grade your first project from start to finish inside of ACES. We'll end the session with an extensive frequently asked questions and live Q&A to bring you guys the most value. So be sure to grab a notepad and don't forget free registration does end soon. So be sure to click that link down below to get yourself signed up. You guys know the drill. If you're enjoying the content here, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesome tutorials. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and let's roll the intro. All right, let's jump right into this one, guys. Got a very exciting video today. This is the first installment, probably of a few videos in a small series where we're gonna be diving in a little bit more in depth on the scopes. We're gonna be focusing on one scope at a time in this little mini series. So first up, as you see, is the vector scope. And whether you're new here, whether you're new to color, whether you're experienced, I think everyone's gonna walk away having learned at least one little thing today. So first off, I wanna address what the vector scope does and doesn't do. What it does do is it is a visual representation on a circular graph of the hue and saturation of our image. So you see over here in this image, we have a lot of skin, this orange color, a little bit of red back here in the background, some neutral tones, and then a whole lot of cyan and blue, and just a touch of green maybe in the far background here. And that's perfectly represented by the vector scope here on the right. And so if we wanted to take our offset here and just pull this all to blue, you can see that being reflected in the vector scope on the right. So what it doesn't do is it's not showing us the brightness or the luminance information. The vector scope doesn't tell us where our shadows are sitting, it doesn't tell us how bright the highlights are, and it doesn't show us any kind of contrast. It is only showing us the hue and saturation of an image. Now that doesn't mean that it's only limited to those things. There's a few excellent use cases that I'm gonna be demonstrating a little bit later on. But first, let's just cover the basics here, how to read the vector scope and how to best set it up for your use case. So to do that, we're just gonna demonstrate all the settings here. Over on the scopes window, and if this isn't popped out for you, if they're only in the bottom right-hand corner, you can just just pop them out and blow them up using the expand button right there and then you can collapse it back down by either clicking the x or you can click back on the scopes button here and if you need to pull up your vector scope this drop down menu right here is going to show us all the different types of scope resolve has to offer and of course we're going to be selected on vector scope now there's two different groups of settings we want to address here there is the overall scope setting, which is going to apply. This, these are kind of settings that are global to all the scopes in Resolve. And then there's a group of settings that are specific to this specific scope. And those settings can be found right next to the scope indicator. So we click this little slider right here, and it's going to pull up this whole tab. And let's quickly run through what all these different settings are. So first off, we have these tabs here that are all low, mid, and high. And that's pretty self-explanatory. It's showing us the low range shadows, our mid-tones, and our highlights. And then of course, we can also have all. And that's what we're looking at right now. We're looking at the hue and saturation of the image as a whole. We can also look at just the hue and saturation of our shadows, of our mid-tones, and our highlights. Next up, we have colorize, and this is going to be making the vector scope colorful. So if we have it deselected, we only see a white vector scope. And there's nothing wrong with that, but personally, I prefer to have it colorized. It's just a quicker way for me to know which colors are in my frame. Next up, we have extents, and this is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a, a border around the vector scope showing us the extents to which that vector scope is reaching. So there's a lot of little fine points here that we really just can't see, but the color is still there. So the trace gives us a more visual representation of just how far the image's color and saturation and hue reaches. So we'll deselect that because I usually like to leave it off. Now we have these two sliders for the vector scope and the graticule, and these really just determine the brightness of the vector scope and the graticule, which is all the elements of the vector scope aside from the vector scope itself, that image trace. So we'll reset this, I like to keep it, generally I like to keep both of them right around the middle, which is the default setting. And then next up we have the low range and high range. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a two by, and this is gonna help us explain how the low range and high range settings work. 
So whenever we have our low selected in this top tab, now we actually get to control the threshold of that low range and the high range. So for example, on our low range, if it's set to 0.27, we're seeing everything, and you can easily correlate this over on the right here. This is the waveform. This shows us the exposure of the image. So 0.27 is gonna to correlate to about 27% up from zero to 1023. Now zero to 1023, that's actually based on bit depth, but you can also set this just to help us understand how this works here. We can set it to a percentage value. And so now it's gonna read from zero to 100. It's the same principle, it's just a different way of identifying it. The zero to 1023 is a little bit more technical. So now that this is set from zero to 100, it's gonna make it easier for us to correlate directly between the low range slider and the values seen here in the waveform. So if we set our low range to 0.5, now we're gonna see that we are displaying everything below 0.5 in the low range. And then our high range, it's set to 0.7. So if we select high, now it's only gonna be showing us the information that's above 0.7 in terms of luminance. And then of course the middle tab, that's gonna show us whatever is between these two values here. So let's jump back into the single viewer and we'll minimize this just a little bit so it's not taking up the entire screen. Back into our settings, the last few little tabs we have here are the show 2x zoom, which is gonna you know, magnify that so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm actually gonna switch this back to all. And the show skin tone indicator is essentially showing us where skin tone should fall if all things are natural. Um, skin tone, regardless of ethnicity or race, it's, all, it's always gonna be on this line right here um, under natural conditions. So if you have an intense grade, it may vary from that. It is a guiding principle, it's not a rule. So if you have a super blue grade, maybe your skin isn't gonna be perfectly along this line. So keep that in mind, um, but it is there to help guide you. And then lastly, show gradical. This is pretty self-explanatory as we increase the intensity of the radical here. Here we get to select whether or not we even want to see it. <laughs> so um, that's it there. And if you ever get too deep into this, you can hit reset view and it'll kind of reset everything for you. So in just a second, I'm going to show you my preferences for the vector scopes. But let's also jump into the drop down tabs here. So our drop down menu, first up, we have the waveform scale style. This isn't going to do anything to the vector scopes because this is for the waveform scale style. If you want to change the settings on the vector scope, you'll do that in the vector scope scale style. And the scale styles here, this is just going to offer you a few different ways uh, to illustrate the targets of the specific hues that are seen here on the vector scope. So I like to leave it at standard, but depending on what you're doing, maybe you're doing some product shot matching and you need to make sure that a certain product is a specific hue, then maybe switching into these different styles would uh, help you hit that target a little bit more easily. Next up, you have display qualifier focus, which is a super handy tool. And you see here, as I have the qualifier selected in the drop down over here left of the frame, qualifier, anything I hover over, it's gonna show me where that point is on the vector scope. So that's super easy for identifying maybe a white point if you wanted to get a better white balance. If you're hovering over that true white point, it should be right here in the center. That center point's gonna be true white with no saturation. So that's one neat way to get a good white balance. And I'll demonstrate a little more about that later. And then we have the low pass filter, which doesn't really do much for the vector scope either. That's also more so for the waveforms. Our next setting is the ratio. And this one's also pretty self-explanatory. We're changing the ratio of the scopes window. I leave it in 16 by nine. And again, I'll get to that in just a second when I tell you why and how I have my scopes set up. Lastly, we have quality and you can set it to auto if you want it to just kind of predict the capabilities of your system and determine the quality of the scopes based on that, based on how much power you want to be putting towards the scopes. Um, but if you have a high powered system, you might be fine leaving them at high. If you have a decently powered system, medium is going to be fine and it's not a huge quality increase jumping to high. So you're just kind of robbing some of the GPU power. And then low, of course, if you have a less powerful system, low is probably going to be your way to go. Um, you can also leave it on auto, but I like to have manual control of that. So that's all the settings regarding the vector scope. Now I want to talk about some of the ways that DaVinci Resolve has improved the scopes over the years because there has been quite a bit of hate about the Resolve scopes and them not being good enough and people finding alternative solutions such as Scopebox, which I probably will be switching to in the near future. But I do want to give Blackmagic some credit where credit is due. They have made some big improvements here. One of the biggest improvements they've done is that in Resolve 16, they introduced the used GPU accelerated scopes, which enabled Resolve to dedicate a little more power from the GPU to run the scopes a bit more efficiently, which of course improved their quality overall. And then in Resolve 17, they introduced a new feature where you used to be limited to a two by and a four by window. And then in Resolve 17, if the window is actually large enough, you can go to a nine by and that looks like a lot of scopes and just too much information but the way i actually like to keep this set up is i'll drag this over into my second monitor on the right i have a scopes monitor on the right my ui monitor here in the center and then i have a reference monitor a flanders dm 240 on the left so for the right monitor i'll leave it as the scopes setup and i just drag this to be full screen essentially and from there i like to set all three of these middle scopes to vector scope and that may seem a little crazy but i'll explain to you why i do that 
Um, you may have noticed these two do not look the same as the one on the left. That's because I leave the one on the left is my low range. That's my shadows. The middle one I leave is my midtones, And then the far right I leave is my highlights. So now I'm able to see the color, saturation, and the hues of my shadows, my midtones, and my highlights all respectively. One way this is super helpful is if you're bouncing from shot to shot and you notice that your shadows, the color overall, the color cast in your shadows is bouncing around, you probably need to do a little bit of work to kind of unify all your clips to make sure that the shadows are staying pretty much in one place. There's gonna be a little bit of variance, um, but you want it to be overall pretty centralized in one specific point. That doesn't mean it has to be completely zero and completely true black with no color, but it should be consistent as you move through a scene. Another way to use the vector scope is for white balance. Um, generally, you'd want the overall, like the, the majority of your vector scope here to align somewhat in the center in this crosshair where the vertical and horizontal axis meet. That's zero saturation right there. So if you have the majority of your image kind of closer to this, instead of being skewed one way, like if it was super cool or super warm, you can get it closer to the center and that's gonna overall usually improve your white balance. Also an important thing to mention, a super handy tip when you're working with the vector scope is the display qualifier focus. Another way this could be super useful, again, back to white balancing because we're talking about color here. If you have an element in the frame that is truly white, you can hover over that with your mouse and it's gonna pinpoint that area in the vector scope for you. And if that area is truly white while you're doing your color correction, you should be able to use your temperature and tint controls or you can use your offset. And you wanna make sure that that white point is aligned in the dead center of the vector scope, right where those crosshairs meet at zero saturation. That can help you ensure that uh, you do have a true white balance. So that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this first installment of our little series here on all the scopes inside of Resolve, how to use them, how to understand them. And you guys know the drill. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. And if you're finally ready to tackle ACES, don't forget we have that free training on August 9th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. That link can be found in the description below. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.